Hey everybody, welcome back. We have a great one for you guys. This is the type of video that we love to do at Ecom Busters because it's gonna test you. I'm, I'm not even sure that you're ever gonna get this question because it's very involved. But we just wanna see if you can stay with us the whole way through. We're gonna combine two things. We're gonna have per unit taxes with perfect competition. It's gonna be a lot of review in it and it's gonna be kinda of tough, but if you can do this whole video, oh my gosh, you are just killing it in microeconomics. So let's take a look at it, okay? I've got perfect competition, I got the market, I got the firm. We're gonna levy a per unit tax on the market. And we wanna see the impact, yes, on the market, but also on the firm. And we're gonna handle this in two separate ways, okay? And I'm just gonna walk you through it. So let's see how we do. So I got a per unit tax. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my tax wedge. But when I put in my tax wedge, I'm also gonna shift the curve, okay? So no big deal. Gonna put in my tax wedge. That vertical distance right there is the base of the tax wedge. It actually it looks like a triangle right like that, but that's the base. That's the important part. That's the per unit tax. And I am going to go ahead and shift the curve, though I don't need to. When I shift the curve, I want to be right at that uh, corner of that triangle right there. And so I'm going to put supply with tax, bring it all the way down just like that. So let's go ahead and, and, and take on this problem one way, which is to show the impact of the tax on the price, okay? So one way we can do this is show the impact of the tax on the price and handle it just like that. Then we're gonna have an addendum to this video, so we're gonna keep going after we do it the way that I think is the most straightforward, and we're gonna do it by showing the impact of the tax on MC and ATC and not on the price. If you didn't follow all that, just stay with this video, okay? It's a good one, guys. I promise we're gonna do a lot here. So I've got my tax wedge, I got my supply right there. So I wanna bring this over, okay? That's gonna be price consumer. I'm gonna bring this over. That's gonna be price producer, but I don't want you to take my word for it. I wanna explain that. The consumer is going to pay that vertical distance to the producer, gonna hand to the producer that amount. And then the producer is going to turn around and pay that, the per unit tax right? that right there is that, they're one and the same, to the government, leaving the producer with an after-tax per unit revenue of PP. Now that just drives me crazy. That should be a vertical line. I don't know what that was. That should be a vertical line. So I've got my PP and my PC. One more time. Consumer pays that vertical distance per unit to the, to the producer. So consumer pays that to the producer. Producer sends that to the government, leaving an after-tax per unit revenue of this amount, which is what PP is. PP is that per unit revenue to the producer after tax. So since this is the producer's price, okay, this is the firm's price. Once again, right now I'm handling the tax by showing the impact on the per unit revenue. Since I'm showing the tax on the revenue side, I'm not gonna show it on the cost side, okay? Stay with me, okay? I gotta get this graph up to date anyhow before I even bring this line over. So starting at long run equilibrium. So I'm actually kind of going back in time now, pre to me even putting that tax in. Let me just show any, uh, a market or a firm in long run equilibrium. We know we've got the MC right there. We need the MC curve to give us the output level. So MC, MR gives us quantity. And if we're in the long run equilibrium, there's no profits, there's no losses. Total revenue equals total cost. And for total revenue to equal total cost, I need price to equal ATC. So I'm going to bring my ATC down until I get right there. I'm hitting the MC curve. I'm going to bring my ATC up, which means at that level of output, that vertical distance is my ATC. And if this is my ATC and it is my price, there's no per unit profits, there's no per unit losses, I'm in long run equilibrium. Now back to where I was, right? Back to that price producer. That is what I'm gonna bring over. As I said just a, you know, maybe a minute ago, guys, we're handling the tax on the revenue side, showing the impact on the revenue side. So I'm gonna put price firm, okay? That's the after tax price. Don't get me wrong, PC is still right about where it was. Okay, that PC right there, it's right up there. But remember, we've got to go ahead and pay that to the government, leaving us with a per unit revenue of PF. I'm going to draw that across. 
I'm not going to actually put demand F because that's just kind of confusing on how we think about it. The important thing though is this is absolutely the new marginal revenue line, right? If this is my PP post tax, my per unit revenue post tax, it is my additional revenue per unit that I produce, okay? So this is giving me my basically the firm's marginal benefit because the firm's marginal benefit is their marginal revenue curve. So with that said, I grab that dot. Why do I grab that dot? Because that is where now MR is hitting MC and I bring this down, I put my Q right there, and I've gotten everything that I want to get, okay? Now let me show you one thing that I got, I didn't even show ex explicitly, but at that quantity, go straight up, what are we now incurring? If we started in long run equilibrium, you can see the firm is now incurring losses, right? My ATC would not be there anymore, it would be right there. Remember, that price firm is no longer existing, Price firms down there. Hey, we've got losses. You can see that vertical distance right above our new output. So here's the takeaway. We've basically done it and done it right, okay? Let's make sure we've got it. The market, we've got that tax wedge. Quantity market used to be right there. That's the old quantity market. Quantity tax right there, absolutely what we'd expect. Quantity to decrease once the per unit tax is put in. We've got our PC, we've got our PP and our PM, all that's correct. As far as the firm, okay, that used to be in long run equilibrium, no profits, no losses, their output is decreasing. Their price absolutely went down, not by the full amount of the per unit tax. You can see that the burden of the per unit tax is being shared between the consumer and the producer, but it absolutely went down. The price firm went down. Maybe I should have kept that old price firm right there, just so we can kind of see the old one versus the new one, and the output that the firm makes also decreased, and now the firm is making a loss because at this new output level, from here to right there, at that new output level, the AVC now, look where I'm hitting the AVC curve, it is above the new price. So they're incurring losses, great. That is the full answer. If you could do that, that was fantastic. But here comes the addendum. The way we just did all of that was by handling the tax on the revenue side. I did not shift either cost curve because I'm just showing the impacts of the tax on the fact that the per unit revenue to the producer went down. However, okay, I could handle this differently. So I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that right there. I'm going to leave a little bit of what we had before. And what I want to show is I could show it on the cost side. Okay. So if I'm going to show it on the cost side, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually use this PC because that's how much they're giving to the producer. Okay. So once again, I've switched in the second half of the video. I'm now showing the impact of the tax on the, if I, I can show the impacts of the tax by just showing the impact on the cost side and not on the revenue side. I just don't want to show them on both sides because then I'd be double counting the tax. I can't show both cost going up and per unit revenue going down for the amount of the tax, else I would double count it. So I'm just doing it another way, showing it on the cost side. And if you're with me right now, unbelievable, so cool, okay? So my PC, gonna bring this across, because once again, price is revenue, I'm not showing it on the revenue side. So this would be now my new price firm, which means this would now be my demand firm and MR. But I'm not done, because MC would have to go up by the amount of the per unit tax. And I can tell you guys, that right there, that distance is the amount of the per unit tax. It's that distance right there. So that means my MC line, look at that per unit tax. My MC line's going right through there. There's my new MC, sub zero, sub one. Look at that guys, back to the same Q. If I handle on the cost side, same Q. Now you might be thinking, hmm, looks like you're making profits though now. We got price firm above ATC. Well guys, what's gonna happen to average total cost? It's also gonna go up by the amount of the per unit tax, right? That average total cost has to go up. So I gotta shift my ATC up also by the amount of the per unit tax. See if I can get that. That's the amount of the per unit tax. I'm gonna just put that on, that was a point on the ATC. So I'm gonna take that, bring it to the ATC. Just wanna go about right through there, okay? 
So going down till I hit MC, going up, ATC. Whew, there it is, guys. Now we can even see, guess what? They're making losses. How many losses are they making? That same Q, that's the Q post tax. Bringing that all the way to right there, bringing that over ATC. Yup, they're making losses. In fact, the same amount of losses they would have been making, okay, um, if we would have done it the other way. So, those are two ways to do it. If you could follow all of that, guys, you're just master in microeconomics, all right? So, once again, that video handled perfect competition, showed starting in long run equilibrium, no profit, no loss, okay? And then we levied a tax, we showed the impact of the tax on the revenue side, not showing it on the cost side because we didn't want to ca double count the tax. So we showed the change in MR by it going down but not changing MC and ATC. And that was one way to do it and we got a result that is consistent with the result that we got when we said, hey, let's not handle it on the revenue side. Let's actually see that price going there, going up as that supply shifts to the left, okay? So we're not gonna handle it on the revenue side. Let's handle it as just an increase in cost by shifting MC and ATC up by the per unit tax. And when we did that, we got the same exact result. That's hard. I mean, I gotta say, when I was studying economics my first year, there's no way I probably could have followed that. We just put these little extra videos in just to make sure that you really, if you wanna like stretch yourself, if you wanna push yourself, try to figure out and follow this one and then try to do it on your own. And if you can do that stuff, my gosh, you're just acing the course. Thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you in another video.